Hello everybody. Today I'm going to do a quick flip through of my journal slash planner for the month of June. Um, for those of you who have seen my videos before, some of this will be repetitive. For people who are new, I want to mention a few things. I use these big Jane Davenport mixed media journals. I like them. I like the size. I like the paper. And at the end, I decorate the covers. Um, check out my other videos to see what I've been doing. And I've fallen into the routine of putting my two month at a glance in the front. So June is finished with my notes and my, to keep me a little bit organized. Um, each journal has been covering two months. Um, I also, if you haven't seen my other videos, am into essential oils. Um, kind of new to them, only a, this year I started, I believe in February, using essential oils for wellness, for health, for mental, um, mental and emotional well-being. I mostly diffuse them in diffusers and use them topically in roller balls. So a lot of my notes on my essential oil pages have to do with what I'm ordering, what I'd like to order. These are the 10 best oils for sleep to help um, with diffusing while we sleep. And I ordered a whole lot of these glass roller balls and as you can see, here's one I made up for allergies, one I made up for heartburn. This one was a gift for a friend. She calls it motivation or rock star. So you put your blends in there and you put in a carrier oil and it has a little roller ball. Now look, I won't put heartburn on my wrist, but here, I'll put allergy. You rub a little on your wrists, you rub a little on your temples, wherever you need it. And I have found them to be really, really helpful. I have a huge collection now of roller balls started. Um, so that's what this is about. Look, these stickers will not stay down. I think I'm going to have to put a layer of matte medium over those to keep them down. And some of my patterning that you'll see later on in the journal, I did on this page with my fountain pens, just to make it a little prettier even though that page is mostly all functional. So, starting 6-2, uh, my little to-do list, because this journal incorporates everything, and I was studying how to draw braids for an upcoming project that I still haven't done, but you'll see um, that eventually. <laughs> I might start that video tomorrow. This little girl was so cute. I had just sketched her down out of my head, and I was like, oh, she's adorable. So I made her larger over here, and... Um, if you're familiar with Christy Sobolewski, uh, she goes by Golf Sprite. I'm a patron of hers, and she does a lot of live streams and little videos for her patrons. And she did this video on patterning in the background. And I, as you'll see in the next few pages, I loved it. These are all my fountain pens. Um, more. I did the patterning in her hair, although that was not fountain pen. That was most likely, hmm... Watercolor in a brush, maybe? Probably watercolor in a fine brush. I did my journaling in her shirt, blended it in. More patterning, all in black and white. And my little memorabilia, taking my grandson to the theater. I'm gonna try and do this flip quickly. Not too much chat, but I find I can't help chatting. All right, we're up to six, four, and five, I believe. More patterning, my to-do list. Um, these are my fountain pens. My go-to. I love it. Her hair, I don't know. It was supposed to be like braids, but it looks like those metal coils you see in electrical work. <laughs> but pretty cool. Uh, very rarely do I put a big quote like this where you can read, but ask yourself often, am I observing the situation accurately or am I projecting how I feel onto what is happening? Obviously, something was going on at that time, and I did some writing down here to vent, but... It's, it's a good, it's a good uh, question. How much of what I'm feeling is my emotions projected on a situation? I like this girl. This is just graphite and uh, some Danielle Smith watercolor, some fountain pen ink patterning in the background. It's a cool page. Here, um, if you saw my Magical Creatures uh, collab video, this was some pre-work I had done. I was just using a red chalk pencil. And this was just a red chalk pencil. Ooh, girl with some flowers. Uh, Giaconda red chalk pencil. I like the chalk pencil, but not on this texture paper. The texture shows up a little too much. 
I was unhappy with this frog as my work, so I did this one, and he was much better. Check out that video, Magical Creatures. I used this frog in that. This girl on 6'8 was just some fountain pen work. I love her pose. I love her hair. If I'm ever looking for something in a bigger piece, I can go back and reference uh, things like this and reuse them. This is That's what I find really useful in these books. This page is way different from what I normally do. I had read the book Secrets of Worry Dolls by Amy Impelazeri. Impelazeri? It was a good book. It was about a woman from Guatemala who then came to the United States. Worry Dolls are a Guatemalan thing. Here, look, I, I looked some up and sketched some little worry dolls. You give your worry to the doll and you put the doll under your pillow. Mostly it's given to children in Guatemala. And now, um, not that adults don't use them, but now it's a... It's a, a big souvenir when you go there. But the book obviously had some impact. I looked up a reference image of a Guatemalan woman, sketched her out. It had a lot to do with these orchids, Catlea orchids. Um, this dish sounded really interesting, a Guatemalan dish, which is a cold salad, fiambre. And these are just little notes of things that really impacted me from the book. So I, I like looking back on this page. And I even looked up travel videos to Lake at I don't know how to say it at Teetlin and it's beautiful and I'm like could we consider a trip to Lake at Teetlin so well that's what that page is about this page is just more patterning more morning writing um, fountain pen and a water a wet watercolor brush my to-do list we're up to 610 this was a live stream with Christy Golf Sprite. I'll mention her a lot during this journal. She was working on three-quarter faces and positioning of faces, so I was drawing along with her. I have not sprayed my fixative in the journal yet, so you'll see a lot of my pencil is smudging. When I spray it, I find I can smell the spray for a couple of weeks afterwards, and that bothers me. So I'm going to let it smudge, and maybe I'll clean it up a little when it's all done. I'll go back and hit a few of these pages with fixative. But for now, I'm not willing to deal with the smell. Uh, another three-quarter face I did during that live stream on 610. This was a face I did uh, during the stream. I was really unhappy with her, and I um, was working on that Magical Creatures video. And this was the writing I looked up to read in the voiceover on that video. So this is all frog symbolisms and meanings. Um, more fountain pen work, patterning, using different colors. Down here I marked what inks I used. Preppy yellow, it's a preppy uh, fountain pen. Speedball pink cartridge, a dark blue cartridge. Um, in case I want to go back and know what colors I used. I like this page. It's all one color, obviously, green. All fountain pen. I was excessive with the water on her face. And it literally wiped out certain sections, but I found I love that look. It's kind of ethereal, um, dreamy looking, so I decided to leave it. I could go back with a fountain pen and darken up and crisp up with those areas, but I like it just like that. And this little girl, she's a little out of proportion, but it's fun. I was at work early, and my coworker, I didn't know what to draw, and my coworker said, Oh, I'm tired of dark things draw draw me an angel i'm not really an angel person um but for my friend shirley i did an angel these are sort of her angel wings in a fuchsia fountain pen up to 615 yes i was just sketching out some eyes and i drew boxes around them and my writing that you can't read although i'm sure a lot of it was political because here this word jumps out resist um but we won't get political today this is a new uh, fountain pen cartridge. It's gray. It came in a new set I got. And it's interesting, although I don't know how much use I'll get out of it. It's really pale and really soft, but I found myself almost digging into the paper trying to make it darker. It gives the effect almost of pencil when I'm done. So that's all gray ink cartridge in a fountain pen and some water to soften it up. This again was the next week live stream with Christy. She was doing different ideas on how to draw clothes and these tilty shoulders. So that's Golf Sprite again during her live stream. Three quarter face using a um, stencil to watercolor the background. And this was, I believe, the same live stream. Um, 
how to use a stencil and incorporate it in the hair. I like her. She's got a very tropical look. And again, three-quarter faces. We've been working heavily on three-quarter faces. And the work is really paying off. I, can, I find now I can sit and sketch off a three-quarter face without any, you know, without drawing the circle and the lines and the proportions. Um, this girl I took from a reference image. I loved her hair. It was like the 20s, what do they call them, finger curls. And I wanted to see if I could capture that hair. And she had cool jewelry. Um, that's all fountain pen and water. This one was watercolor. This one was fountain pen. So these are all my colors of fountain pens. <laughs> that is wild, isn't it? Look at the colors. And she even, between her eyes and her hair, like, whoa. Um, I don't know how I feel about all that color. I look at it and I feel like, oh, it's not really me. This journaling I did here almost looks like thoughts shooting out of her head. But that's okay too, right? Um, it's clunky. Like if this were an artwork, I were trying to like finish off and make it all balanced, I would have to do more work out here. But being that it's my journal planner, sometimes it just is what it is. And that's okay. So I think in response to all this color, I did this page, sepia and black. And it's only those two colors. And uh, this color combination really, really calls to me. So this was part, again, of Christy, one of Christie's live streams. Uh, two three-quarter faces. She was working on a very similar picture. So I sketched them out as I watched her work. And I have this book, How to Draw 20 Ways to Draw a Tree or whatever, and they had a whole page on moths. So I put that moth up there. And then this technique in the background, I'm not going to give away the secret. Christy taught us that. Gulf Sprite taught us that on, as her patrons. And uh, I'm not going to tell you how it's done, but I love it. You'll see a lot more of that technique in my work. Thank you, Christy. So... I had put this moth on, and then I closed the book, and apparently it wasn't dry. So see the moth wing repeated over there? So I thought, oh, what am I going to do on this page? I thought, oh, just draw a big face and make it work in the hair. And it's interesting because I would never have drawn that hairline. Um, I went with the same colors and the same technique in the background. I love this girl. I think she's one of my favorites. I even... Just plain, I put a little mask over her eyes, little two little pieces of torn paper and just spattered ink, sort of, sort of freckle-like. She's got one dangly earring. I don't know. I think this is my favorite two-page spread in the whole journal so far. This girl I did on my 33rd wedding anniversary. Yeah, the 33 is a little tacky and blatant, but, you know, I, for a long time I didn't understand how art journaling expressed things I don't know, I just didn't get it. I figure, okay, I'm doing art, but it really doesn't mean anything. But more and more and more, I get it. And it's so hard to explain to people who don't journal. So this is a young girl. This was my reflections of myself when I met my husband 33 years ago. So this is a young me. No, does it look like me? No, but that was my expressing myself. And my writing here was going back to my my first memories of the, you know, the excitement and the joy of meeting my husband. And, and sh this girl here just to me looks young and happy and full of hope for the future. And that's what I was reflecting on. Now, will somebody else see that when they see it? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But that's the expression I was feeling that day. Um, I don't know. Did I explain that well? Huh? So... <laughs> This one's funny. Where where do we get inspiration? So I was at the grocery store, ShopRite, and they were handing out pamphlets about these cheeses that are made in Sardinia, and they're all made from sheep's milk. And they, look, they portray these cheap sheep, I'm sorry, these sheep as living happy, beautiful lives. I'm not sure that's true. I'd like to believe it's true. Um, but this sheep here just caught my, I love that sheep. Look how beautiful it is. That to me, it looks like a little old woman. So I drew that sheep here, and then when it was in pencil only, it really looked like a little old woman. It looks like she's wearing, I don't know, some sort of fluffy coat and, and instead of a bell as a necklace. So <laughs> then I was just going to put a girl back here, and automatically I started making my girl half sheep, half girl. And I know it's odd, but boy, was that fun. Um... These were supposed to be earrings in the shape of ears, but I ended up making ears kind of tucked down under her hair. And yes, it's a very funky nose, and she doesn't have a very good expression, but <laughs> that's my sheep girl. Who knows where we get inspiration from? It could be anywhere. 
so I do like water soluble graphite pencils um, I believe I have a set of Derwent but this day I was trying the Stabilo all graphite you know they are the Stabilo all colors I have like I don't know five or six colors but one is just simply graphite and I wanted to see how it worked I don't find it as bold and dark as the Derwents or the other Stabilos, but it's interesting. She's kind of dreamy and soft, and my morning writing is in the back. Um, this girl is all three colors, limited palette, three colors of watercolor. This blue, this orange, and this sea green. Um, then, you know, um, color blocking in the background, adding some things. I wanted to show you this. I find stencils anywhere. Um, these, this was some old game. I was cleaning out a closet at work and there were game pieces that you punched out of these holes and most people throw this out, but not me. I will make a stencil out of anything. So that's how I did my circles. And this was all done with a fine watercolor brush, making the dots and making the, the grasses. So, this page here, oh, I forgot. Before I made the video, I was going to tape this in. I was working on a picture about water. So this girl is, I started with a fountain pen. I'm sure I started with a fountain pen. Maybe not, maybe it was watercolor. Isn't that funny? I need to make more notes to know exactly what I did. And I had a long time ago made this stencil myself out of a file divider and a little heat tool and I thought they looked like water drops so I put that over and I used a sponge and watercolor and made the water drops and then these are water splats from a Tim Holtz stencil so then I put on these water splats in the three places as you can see I was going to do more doodling but never really went anywhere with it this is a Stabilo all pencil to give her some hair um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to use that and develop it further or just leave it at that. It is what it is. This here I had seen on Pinterest and, you know, I couldn't go back and find it. I looked. Somebody had posted a, like a Zen Tangle Doodle. But to me, this is not, you know, all that. I mean, I mean I'm sure it's not copyrighted. It's just these little grassy, leafy type things that you repeat. And I used my green fountain pen and a wet watercolor brush and went around and made my circles. Somehow, this was just a scrap of paper I had grabbed on my lunch hour at my desk. It turned into this whole girl. I used the same design for her hair, her necklace, grass. Who knows if this is a tree coming down, I don't know, and the circles. And then I thought, well, I'm not gonna throw this one out. So I did another girl. The only thing I'm sad about is I messed up her hand. Um, same hair, same dress. Here's a little doodle on the bottom of her dress. So now I don't know what to do with it. I don't know if I should tape it here as a flap, like that. If I should tape it up here in a flap. Well, you can't see that. It's out of the screen. But it would be up here and flap down like this. So that's one of my decisions today. I think I like it here. And then flip it this way. So anyway, that's that page. I like that page. This day I was... I was venting, obviously. Um, I just used some uh, graphite. Well, that's, an, that's an angry me. And at the same time, look, I hate conflict. I hate confrontation. I can't confront people. Um, and this is how I end up feeling. At the same time, I was trying to order some vegan watercolors from a company in Canada called Colors of Nature. Um, so I, I worked out my colors, my set, how much I wanted to spend. I put the order in the cart, and it ends up... Apparently, they're closed for the summer and moving to British Columbia, so I can't order them until September. We'll see if in September I still have the urge to do that, or if I remember to go back and look at all these notes. Um, like I said, I haven't sprayed this, and it's uh, smearing terribly on the other pages, so I put this paper in here. This girl, I started with... I think I started this on my lunch hour at work, and I had my travel watercolors with me, not my Danielle Smith. So I, I travel with some of the Jane Davenports because it's this little kit. They, they don't fall out. I used the yellow, the orange, and this blue down here. And I just did a background and spattered. Then when I went to do the girl, I... 
the minute, let me back up. The minute I was done the background, I didn't like the feel of the paper. I was like, oh, there's something wrong here. This is not good. I sketched my girl in pencil and then I started in on watercolor and the watercolor just would not behave. Can you see those ugly blooms? And the more I put on her neck, I couldn't, couldn't fix it. Every time I put it on, it got worse and worse. It was lifting up the color underneath. I could glaze super quickly, like with a super quick brush, but after that, it would just mess up the underlayer. So I continued and I did, I kind of like these doodle backgrounds and these little patterning techniques. And overall, do I like her? Yes, but I, these issues really bother me. So I'm like, all right, what is it? Is it these paints? Is it the paper? Um, these pages have two sides. This is the super texture side, and this is the back smoother side. So I did this redheaded woodpecker because they live at, uh, on the campus where I work. And one flew across, it was beautiful, flew across as I drove into work and it just made me so happy that day. So in my lunch hour, I got out a reference picture and did a redheaded woodpecker with my Danielle Smith watercolors. And these behave beautifully, but like I said, this is the back smooth side of the paper. Um, I went ahead and did her just to kind of match that page. She's a mixture of fountain pen ink, some mermaid markers. This is a mermaid marker to bring up the darks. And I tried to continue some of these colors just to make it cohesive. So to make a long story short, the reason I'm talking about all this is I had to do an experiment. I found this next page is the rough side of the page. And I put down some Danielle Smith watercolors. I used three deep, uh, quinacridone, quin gold deep. I can't remember the color, rose of ultramarine and sap green because I didn't have the same three colors as this other picture. But now I'm going to do a girl and use the watercolor and see if they behave as badly. If it's just, then I'm gonna to have to say it's the paper because I've done this process many times before and it didn't do that. So I'll update you on that next month, how that goes. Um, today is June 30th. I'll have this video up probably later on today. Um, so that's my monthly journal. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too chatty. Um, my journal planner that helps keep me organized and keep me focused and keep me doing art. So thank you for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And the next video I do will be a process video. Um, I have a big project planned, so look for that. Hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.